The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam. First canto, first chapter, text number one, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 21st of February, 1975, in Caracas, Venezuela. Sri Rupam This is already asserted that Vasudeva, the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Lord is Vasudeva because He is present everywhere. The, this evening there was some discussion that God has no particular name. But his uh, names are there on account of his different type of activities. It's like God is present everywhere, therefore his name is Vasudeva. Uh, in the Brahma Samhita it is said that God is within this universe and down to the sun and not only within the universe, but He is in everyone's heart, and also He is within the atom. Therefore God is unlimited. God is not limited to become gigantic universal form, but He is also able to enter within the atom. Therefore in the Vedic language, God is described, Ano, Ano Ranyan, Mahato Mahiyan. He is greater than the greatest and is smaller than the smallest. God has expanded Himself in two different types. He has expanded Himself as Samsa or personal expansion. Personal expansion and another expansion is Vivinamsa, separated expansion. So God expands Himself personally. Rama Vimutti Sukala Niyame Natishthan Nana Avatara Makarad Bhuvane Sukintu Krishna Sayam Samavavat Paramapumana Yu Govindamani Guru Sankama. By his personal incarnation he expands as Rama, Nishimna, Paraha, uh, Mamana, and so many thousands. There is his personal expansion. Here is Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda. They are of personal expansion. So that is one type of expansion. Another type of expansion is the Vivinamsa, uh, just like we are. We are also expansion of God, but this is, Vibhinnamsa uh, means the smallest particle. It's like the sun sign. The sun sign is combination of bright molecules. So very small parts, bright, brightened part, combined together, they are called sun, that is called sun sign. So we living entities, we are also small bright particles as part and parcel of God. In this way God is expanded uh, everywhere. The Mahamadi impersonalists, they think if God is expanded everywhere, then where is God uh, personally? That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Maya Kadamidam Sarvam Jagat Abhakta Murtina Masthani Sarva Bhutani Nahav Deju Abhasita. Krishna God says that I am expanded in my impersonal form everywhere. Everything is existing 
on account of me. But still I am not everything. It's like God has expanded a, this microphone. The microphone is also expansion of God's energy. But that does not mean we have to worship the microphone. So God is, has got that power that although He has expanded Himself in His impersonal form everywhere, still He has got His original existence. A small example can be given in this connection. Just like a father, He has given birth to hundreds of children. That does not mean the father is finished. This children is the expansion of the father, but father keeps himself as father. So in this way <coughs> he is Basude, means he is present everywhere. He says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvagopani Pada He has got his hands and legs and eyes everywhere. Because the uh, part and partial expansion of God, either Vishnu Tattva or Jiva Tattva, they are everywhere. Besides that, God is existing in everyone's heart, the super soul. So the super soul is giving direction to the individual soul. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita it is said, Aham Sarvasvachaham Vidhisham Nivishtya. Riddhi means in the heart. I am situated in everyone's heart. Matta smriti jnana mapohana cha, because God is situated within my heart, therefore He is giving me direction. So our remembrance and forgetfulness is due to God. Sometimes we forget something and try to remember, immediately God helps us. It is this. And we say, yes, yes, and now I remember. Now I remember means we are forgetting. Krishna immediately gives him, it is this, then I remember. In this way, God by his uh, plenary expansion, he is situated everywhere. That's why his name is Vasudeva. Now, Vasudeva is the origin of everything. So that is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Vasudeva Sarvam Niti Samahatma Sudhudhulava. Anyone who has understood that everything what we see, that is Vasudeva. But we should always remember that Vasudeva is everything. Still, everything is not Vasudeva. Just like in a big factory, uh, in your country or in America, that Ford, Mr. Ford, he has got a very big factory. So in the factory, everywhere, the Mr. Ford is there. Uh, where if you have to see Mr. Ford, you cannot see the car Ford and you become satisfied. The car is also written there, Ford. So if I want to see Mr. Ford, and if you see the car, and you see, now I met with Mr. Ford, that is good. <laughs> the car is Ford, but Ford is not the car. In this way, try to understand. Everything is God, but everything is not God. In this way, you have to understand. Don't be misled by the uh, Mayavadi philosophy that everything is God and my knowledge is finished. That is imperfect. Then the origin of everything, what is the nature of that origin that is being explained now? Vasudev is everything accepted, but whether Vasudev is a living being or a dull matter. Nowadays the theory, scientist theory is going on that life is made of chemical. Mm. That means matter. This has been discussed five thousand years ago by Master, whether the
the origin of life is life or matter. So he said that the origin of everything is life. Because Vasudev is also life. And now you come to your argument and reason whether origin of life is matter or life. That you have to discuss. So here it is said that origin is life because here it is said Jato Annayat Itaratasya Arthisu Vigyo Sara. Just like he, I am taken as the origin of this Krishna consciousness moment. Uh, that means I know everything directly and indirectly of all this moment. If I do not know directly and indirectly everything of this moment, then I cannot be called the founder of Jari. And as soon as the origin becomes a knower, he is like. So therefore dull matter cannot be the knower of everything. Uh, now it is said, Jato Annayat is Arasasya Arthesu Avigna Sara. He is Avigna. Avigna means cognizant. The uh, original source of everything, he has his brain, he knows, he has the power of knowledge. Everything is there. That is the reason. Anything material we think, just like this microphone, this microphone is combination of some metal and some wax or everything is metal or something plastic. But they have not combined together automatically. A person who knows the art, he has combined all of them together. Now it is active. Now if this microphone is not in order, then I will have to take to the person who knows what is indirectly and directly the composition of the microphone. Therefore, the origin of everything, or the original source of everything, is the knower, is not dull matter. So therefore it is stated here, obhigna. Obhigna means perfectly knower. Now it can be said that obhigna, perfect knowledge is uh, received from a superior person. It's like I do not know what is the mechanical arrangement of this microphone, but if I want to know it, then I must go to a perfect no one who can explain me that these ingredients or these parts of the machine are there. Therefore the question may be raised that the original source of everything is no one of everything accepting. But where he got the knowledge? Like that sometimes the atheist class sometimes inquire that the God is the original Father, the Supreme Father of everyone. Then who is God's father? The answer is that God has no father, he is self-sufficient. Therefore this word is his sara. Sara means self-sufficient. So far we are concerned. I have got my father. My father has got father. His father has got father, 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 more. When come to a person who has no more father, that is God. That is the test. If we find if we find somebody that he has no father, then he is God. And if some rascal comes and says, I am God, then right, you ask him whether he has got father. As soon as he says that I yes, I have got father, then he is God. So in your country so many imitation gods come, I know. Uh, but you ask them to test it. Whether you have got father. If you say, yes, I have got father, then you say you are dog. Therefore God's another name is unborn. Unborn means he is not begotten by any father. That is stated in the Vedic language that Advaita Yachyate Govindam Adi Purusam Vishara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigra On Adi, Adi. Anadi means he has no source of emanation. 
And but he is Adi, he is the original source of everything. Therefore, it is said, Anadi Adi. Anadi means he is without any source. But everyone is on account of his presence. No, it is simple understanding. There is no difficulty to understand God. Anadi Radi. Everyone has got Adi. Uh, just like I have got my father, father has got his father, his father, his Adi. Adi means the original soul. But when you go to Krishna or God, uh, he has no one. Uh, he is self sufficient. Try to understand the simple formula of understanding God. That God has no origin. But he is the origin of it. Now the next question would be, According to Vedic information, the original person is Lord Brahma. When there was creation, the first created being was Lord Brahma. Then from Brahma all other living entities expanded. This is the creation understanding. So one may mistake, then Lord Brahma is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because he has no, uh, nobody knew that uh, by whom born Lord Brahma was born. It may be questioned like that. But Brahma is not the original source of everything, although he has created this universe. He is not the original source. Therefore, it is explained here that the original person is Vasudeva or Krishna. And he gave intelligence to Brahma to create this universe. But if we put this argument that Brahma was alone, how he took instruction from the superior person? Therefore it is said, Tene Brahma Jida, the Supreme Personality of God in Vasudev, instructed him from the within the heart. That is not only uh, for Brahma, I mean, this is not the only prerogative of Brahma. Krishna, we have already stated, is stated in everyone's heart. If you want to consult him, he can give you an instruction. The only thing is that you have to become qualified like Brahma so that you can receive instruction from him within the heart. And what is that qualification? That is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Tetam satadhijuttanam bhajatam atritiku bhagam gadami buddhi yogantam jinamam ujyati te. Krishna said that I am situated in everyone's heart. Simply one has to become qualified to hear. And what is that qualification? That qualification is practice of bhakti yoga. He said, Tetam satadu jutta bhajatam prithipurvaka. Bhajatam prithipurvaka means bhakti yoga. Always engaged in service of the law with love and affection. So, Tetam, those who are always 24 hours engaged in loving service of the law, to him only he gives an instruction, you do like this. And what is that instruction? Jenoma Mukajanti, the instruction is meant for uh, giving him facilities to come back to home, back to God. Here in this material world we are struggling for existence and therefore we are not happy here. Therefore Krishna says that Sarvadhamman Parikajama Mekam Saranandra. You who give up all these vestal engagements. You simply just surrender to me. And when we are surrendered, that surrender is Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudeva. That, that means Krishna Vasudeva, I accept your proposal. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Then begin your loving service to render to Krishna. And gradually you get instruction from within, you do like this, you do like this, you do like this. So it is not difficult for anyone. 
Uh, it is very simple thing. Uh, and what is that simple thing? Manmana bhavavad bhaktam madhyadi manus. Means always think of me, uh, manmana, you just become my devotee. Unless one is devotee, he cannot always think of Krishna. That is not possible. On the other hand, who thinks of Krishna twenty four hours, he is good. Therefore, we are spreading this news that you chant Hare Krishna. The chanting of Hare Krishna means thinking of Krishna. Krishna says, Manmanapava, just always think of me. In other place, he says, Jogilamapi sarvesam, madhvata antarapana, sadhyavan vajati juma, sami vittuta. He says that anyone who is always thinking of me within his heart, he first class yogi. So the yoga system is very popular in your country, but this is the uh, example of becoming first class devotee, uh, first class yogi. And you haven't got to take so much trouble by placing your nose or beating your head or this. Simply chant Hare Krishna. And you become first class yogi. And as, as soon as you become first class yogi, all power is within you. Perhaps you do not know the yogic perfection, eight kinds of power. Simply gymnastic practice is not yoga. You must attain the power. The power is animal, vima, mahima, prakti, siddhi, vasita, visita, like that. Anima means you can become smaller than the smallest. One who has attained yogi perfection, he can become, uh, you lock up uh, anywhere and he will come out. This is yoga siddhi. Not that a yogi is locked up and he cannot come out. So yoga siddhi. So yoga siddhi you can get uh, when you uh, become perfect yogi, mahima also. You can uh, float in the air. That is called Lagima. Uh, now the aeroplane is going in the air, very good speed. But when you get yoga siddhi, your speed, because you become very light, you can go anywhere in a moment. It is uh, speedier than the mind. That kind of mind, you are sitting here and your paternal home may be 10,000 miles away, but by mind you can go immediately. Mental speed. He can cannot take your body immediately there, but he can take your mind there immediately. So why is this possible? Because mind is finite than this gross body. Uh, that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Indriyami Pararahu, Indriya Bhaparamana, Manastu Parabhi. It's finite, finite, finite. That's because this gross body. This gross body means senses. The finer than this is the mind. So yoga system means to control the mind. By controlling mind, you can control the senses because mind is the master of the senses. Then above mind, is still finer, is the intelligence. So you can train up your mind with intelligence. But that is the best intelligence when one engages the mind in Krishna consciousness. Then you'll get instruction from the Supreme Personality of Godhead sitting anywhere. So these things can be understood gradually and after purifying the mind. At the present moment, on account of our material contamination, our mind is contaminated with so many material things. If you purify your mind, then you come to the spiritual platform. That is intelligence by a media between the spirit and the mind. First of all, body. Finer than the body is mind. Then finer than the mind is intelligence. And finer than the intelligence is the soul. So if you keep your mind always engaged at the lotus feet of Krishna, then it becomes very fast. So this is the movement of Krishna consciousness, how to fix up the mind always at the lotus feet of Krishna. And it is called bhakti yoga. So if you practice this bhakti yoga, then everything will be perfect in your life.
we are spreading this bhakti yoga all over the world and here is one of the center. You take advantage of it. It is not sentimental, it is authorized on scientific basis, philosophical basis. So we have got so many books, about fifty books about this Krishna consciousness movement. You can read that, you can ask the devotees if you cannot understand uh, and chant Hare Krishna and make your life perfect. Now, thank you very much. If you have got any question, you can ask. Tamaj means always remain thinking of Krishna. In the temple there is much maya, and the, and the people live in the temple are cold. And where there is no maya? Tell me a place where there is no maya, we shall go there. <laughs> No Maya. Because I am in Maya, I am thinking that temple is Maya. That is said in the Bhagavad Gita. Mame Buja Prabhupada Maya me tan tadanti. Why anyone who surrenders to me, he overcomes the influence of Maya. Therefore, every member in this temple, they are surrendered. Therefore, they are not in Maya. <laughs> Hmm? How many different ways are there for self-realization? Only one path. God is one, and to realize Him, the path is one. There cannot be two paths. Just like, suppose, uh, in India. The India is from here to the uh, eastern side. Yeah. This is an example that you cannot find in the western side. They say Columbus, he wanted to discover India. He did not go to the eastern side. He went to the western side. So he found America. <laughs> so if you want to find out God, then you have to take the right path. That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhaktyamāva vijānāsi jāvāna jaskāmi he never says by gyan, karma, jo, one can achieve God. That is not possible. Only by bhakti. So if you want to have God, then you have to take these devotional activities. But if you want to have Maya, you can take the current path. He was saying how Columbus also, if he would have kept going, he would have... But he is going to the... <laughs> yes, you are right. The Columbus would, would have gone still farther, farther western side and he could have get India. That means if you take other path, then he will achieve God after many, many lives. Not in India. So if you want to waste your time to achieve God, you can take different paths. But if you want immediately, then to work the path. Just like uh, nowadays there are the lift up, lift and the staircase. If you want to go to the topmost flat, you can go by the steps or you can go by the lift. But when the lift is there, why shall you take the steps? You take the advantage of the lift, within a second you go to the top flat. And if you go by step by step, it will take whole day. Therefore, unintelligent person takes to other path, and the intelligent person will take to what we do. He says, he, Son of God, we admit it. Father and I are one. First, what does he mean by that? Yes, because everyone is spirit soul, and Christ is also spirit soul, therefore they are one. He said in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was God. What does this mean? Means God was there, therefore He had His Word. God is person, therefore He can speak. <laughs> there are Word, God's Word. That means God is person. 
And because he is person, therefore he has his son, Christ. So if you follow Bible, you also get knowledge. We are after seeing people that he has got knowledge of God. It is not a question of Bible or Bhagavad Gita. We want that you become God conscious. That is our moment. In the Simad uh, Bhagavatam, there is no such mention as Christian religion, Hindu religion, Muslim religion, or Buddha religion, there is no. No. Bhagavat says, Sabai Bhumishan Parodharma. That is first class religion which helps one to love God. So how we are propagating, teaching people how to love God. That is our mission. So we don't say that you become Christian or Hindu or Muslim or no. You become a lover of God. So comparatively the process which you are recommending, that is the easiest process. And that is admitted by one priest in Boston. He said that these boys and girls are our uh, countrymen, are our boys. Before this movement they did not come to the church, and now how they are married after God. So therefore this is the easiest process to become pure and go back to home, back to God. Thank you very much.